this is church. Someone had um, mentioned or asked, I don't remember, the other day um, that they knew someone who is a Christian, but they don't go to church. And I was explaining, you know, the importance of church is this. Because we are the church, being around the body like this is so important. We get to pray for each other, be united with each other, be one with each other, cry with each other, laugh with each other. It's so important to be the house of God. And I, first of all, I want to thank you guys for sharing your testimonies because we do rejoice with you. I mean, this is this is awesome. Yeah. These testimonies that have come about, yeah. and also for those of you vulnerable to share your prayer requests, that is really important and very special. And we all take that to heart. And we will keep you in prayer during the week for sure. Yes, yes. And we want to hear great things at the end of the week, uh, end of the month, whenever it happens. We know that victory victory will be in your favor. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <coughs> so, <laughs> hmm. Maybe we should. Yeah, I just feel like there there was a heaviness that set on us, and in all things we are rejoicing because God is with us. And all things, the scripture says, count it all joy. Why? Because you are never alone. Jerry, your sister is never alone. Buster, you are never alone. Carol, Bill, Yoli, you guys are never alone. And we, we want to rejoice in, the, in, in, in that. If nothing else, sometimes that is what keeps us going is that even in the midst of, of our crazy weeks and crazy schedules and, and things coming up, God is yet and still with us. And his strength, his strength is what helps us to keep going. His joy, his peace, you know, his love. That we sing a song about that. His joy, his peace. That's what gives us energy and strength to keep going. And I, I thank you all because we are greater as a body than we are by ourselves. So, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you for being with us in our, in our most vulnerable times, Father God, being with us in our joyous times, being with us in the midnight hour when nobody else is, Father God. I thank you for your peace, your joy, Father God, your fullness coming through, even in those moments, Father God. I thank you that, you know, when things happen, it, it may shake us, but we're not fall. We don't fall. We don't yield to it. Father God, I thank you that your strength builds us up, Father God. I just thank you for encouragement. I just thank you that we can yet have joy in the midst of these things, yet have that, that inner security of knowing that you are with us and just being with us. And I just thank you. I pray that the rest of the week, Father God, that we will be more aware of those moments, of those things, of how you show us, how you're showing up in our situation, how you're showing up in our lives, Father God. And I just thank you for an overwhelming joy, an overwhelming peace to flow through all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to switch things up a little bit. You know, Gareth was here last week. And I don't know if he said it here, if he said it at a firm meeting. But sometimes we just need to come prepared in heart and see what God will do. I have something very simple, and I'm, not, I'm going to actually table it and not share what I was going to share because God's sharing a different way today. And I'm fine with that. My big prayer was, Lord, flow your way. We come with our plans, our agendas, and it's all good, but flow your way. And do you feel like God is, the word is being ministered? You see, whether you crack open your holy Bible or not, that's a tool. But we are living epistles read of all men, and God is still ministering. God is still ministering. Amen. Hallelujah. And I wanted us to have communion together today. And as we have communion, I want us to just worship the Lord. Your praise will ever be on my lips. Ever be on my lips. Amen. So, Dr. John, if you'll come up after we do the ver first verse, praise God. You can stand. You can sit. Just whew, praise God. Hallelujah. Your praise will 
ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. supper together, just want to kind of bring your attention to something. You know, the Passover meal in the Jewish religious system is a very important meal, but it has some interesting ironies about it, some interesting things about it that maybe we miss, because normally when we look at the Passover meal and we see our brothers and sisters, our Jewish brothers and sisters having that meal, the very next step of the Passover is their deliverance out of Egypt, but then there is a long wilderness experience that brings them to a mountain where the law will be given, a priesthood called the Levitical priesthood will be established, and then a temple uh, of blood sacrifices will be unveiled. You can sit down if you want. But Jesus did something different because in the actual unveiling of God's intention, the law, Moses going up the mountain, getting the, the tablets, do you know that was never God's ultimate intention? It wasn't. That fell as a consequence of when the children of Israel said, we don't want to hear God. Mm. If you go back to the book of Exodus, it says, we don't want to hear God. Moses, you go up the mountain. Mm. And the second that happened, all of a sudden, law, a priesthood of blood sacrifice, and a temple that would perpetually have blood sacrifices was born. Jesus did something at the Passover meal that totally reversed that system. And that's what you're about to engage in right now. You see, consider, when the children of Israel were liberated from Egypt, there was no laws, there was no temples, there was no Levitical priesthood. Which means 
And if you remember the story, when they left, the Egyptians were like, here, take my gold rings. Here, take this with you. Man, they didn't only leave in freedom, they also had provision. Praise God. And here again, they didn't have to keep no rules. No. Hallelujah. There was no temple that they had to go in and out of sacrifice. And there was no priesthood to oversee all that. What does that tell you? That you can be free and prosperous without all that stuff. Hallelujah. That's number one. Number two, what Jesus will then do is he'll go hearken back to the Melchizedek priesthood in that moment. If you remember, Melchizedek and Abraham meet in Genesis 14, and that's when Melchizedek brings the bread and the wine, and that's when this this really new covenant-esque relationship begins. And it's not till Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, then finally we have Moses and we have the institution of the law, etc. But what Jesus does is he goes right up to the Passover meal, which is the meal of liberty, right? The, the meal of provision. Yes. And when I say liberty, I'm including healing, everything that goes with it. And then he does something after that's all done is he goes out into a garden to pray and now the conflict of the old and new happen because at that point in time in the old that's when they went out into the wilderness and then we find them at the mountain where the law is given this something different happens here a guy by the name of Judas shows up we know he's betraying Jesus. Mm -hmm. But you know, anybody remember what the name Judas means? That means praise. Yes, it does. He's going to be betrayed by praise. Yes. He's going to be betrayed by a style of worship. Yes. He's going to be betrayed by religious worship. Mm. And instead of going up a mountain and receiving a law, Jesus is going to be taken up a mountain and crucified. Mm. So the law crucifies the lamb. Yes, it does. And the high priest Caiaphas, the ultimate Levitical priesthood, uh, priest, high priest, will sacrifice the Melchizedek priesthood. But in Jesus doing that, that reverses something. The laws are put on the cross with him. Yes, The hallelujah. priesthood is put on the cross with, yes. with him. And when he resurrects, the, the veil of the temple is rip ripped and yes. the temple becomes obsolete. Woo! Amen. This is the message in the gospel. Yes. That your deliverance, your freedom, your provision doesn't require any of those things. Just a relationship with your true identity in God. That's it. Woo. Have a relationship with your true identity in God and all of a sudden, things would begin to change doesn't mean you may not have some crucifixion type moments but even in those moments there's still a resurrection at the end there's no way you can fail with that the other system only brought death that's 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 why the apostle paul called it the ministry of death the moses ministry of moses he calls in second corinthians the ministry of death sadly we many times go to our Old Testament with an Old Testament eye yes. uh, purview and we start pulling things out of it and start applying it to our lives and our Christianity. I hear it on Christian television all the time that we, we get this mingled gospel. And I think little by little God's been raising up folks to begin to kind of reveal to us those truths to another level. You are his likeness and image. Yes. And as we partake today in this communion, this Lord's Supper, remember it's a supper of liberty. It's a supper of provision. It's a supper that is not attached to a priesthood with a bunch of rules. It's not attached to a priesthood with a natural temple that has repetitive animal sacrifice. The sacrifice has been made. It's over and done with. We don't have to do it, do it again. We're just rejoicing in the fact, not that the sacrifice was made as much as the resurrection happened. Because that system of sacrifice could not hold down the king of liberty. Hallelujah. Understand what I'm saying? That system of sacrifice 
could not hold down the King of Liberty. Hallelujah. And that King of Liberty lives in you. Amen. Live stream, he lives in you. So as we partake today, the Bible tells us, do this in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. It says, and Jesus said, This is now out of the Gospel of Matthew. It's one I don't normally read, but I'm going to read it to you. Just good old King James here. It says, Where'd it go? And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread, blessed it, and broke and said, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Two things there. He said, You are my body. You are one with him right now. And as we partake in the bread, those of you on live stream, if you want, run to the refrigerator real quick, get a little piece of bread or a cracker. If you have some red wine or grape juice or something like that, grab some of that. If you don't have any of that, use something. We'll just believe God with you that it is representative. Yes, that's all it's about. We're, yes. not, we're not picky here, and I don't think God's going to fall off his throne and go, oh my gosh, they had, you know, water. You know. <laughs> Actually, if you're really cool, maybe you could turn the water into wine and then Ooh. text us. Huh? Yeah, yeah please, go. we want to know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure it's a nice Chardonnay or maybe a Cabernet Sauvignon. Anyway, okay. But you digress. Go ahead. Of course, of course, if you're able to do that, man, we're in business. <laughs> so when you do this, you are one with him. That's the whole point of the body. The concept of the body is you are faces of God. And his blood life that was sacrificed for the remission of sins. Sadly, you know, we don't believe that last part, remission. A lot of things were just forgiven. Now, I'm not saying forgiven is wrong, but remission means it never occurred. Woohoo, yes. Now, consider this. If you live in a place where there's no time or distance, and then you declare something's never occurred, then guess what? It never occurred. Right. As if you never fell, as if you never sinned. Nothing. It's gone. There is it's no remembrance because it doesn't exist there. Amen. Woo. Good news, good news. Park on that all week. Glory to God. So Woo. as we partake, this is not about Jesus dying because of our ugliness. This is about the liberty of the Passover. The lamb that brought us into that revelation once again that we are his image and likeness. And you know what that sacrifice ultimately does? It removes all our silly excuses on why it isn't true. Yes. Amen? Amen. Shall we partake of this together? Yes? Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Brittany, why don't you come up here? Amen. Kayla, why don't you come up here? Hallelujah. Two beautiful young women of God. Yeah. Put these lovely young ladies to work. It's painless. We promise. We promise. Kayla, if you would, tell you what, let me put this on top of it here. Yeah, everybody gets one big matzo. No, if you would break that up into little pieces for us. Hallelujah. There we go. Okay. What we're going to do for those of you, uh, um, this may be a little new for Brittany here. You do not have to drink that whole thing. No, you do not. Oh, okay. Thank you, okay. Lord. Actually, you come on up. We take a piece, a piece of the monster, dip it in here as the body and blood of Christ, and receive it into yourself. And recognize again, yes. recognize that there's no going up a mountain anymore to receive commandments. Hallelujah. And temples of sacrifice is only liberty and provision for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. As Pastor Karen sings, would you be so kind? Just come up as you feel inclined and let's receive together. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your
that same spirit. We just talked about provision. Amen. Provision in the Passover, right? Amen. Amen. So on that note, we're going to take up our tithes and offerings. Because we have faith and trust in God that he will provide. And we're not going to do this because of the law, right? No. Because of God's grace of his love and because we love him. Amen. You are good. Lord, you are been a few times in Andrews in my life where God did the impossible financially yes more than a few times um, but an example that comes to mind is there was a point I think we just had Lily or something and um, we were really scraping the bottle the bottom of the barrel trying to figure out how to uh, uh, make things happen financially. We didn't get paid for about three days and we barely had any food in the fridge. We needed to buy diapers. We needed to buy, and we were really, really struggling. And Andrew gets paid uh, electronically, so it would come at a certain time of the month, every month. And Andrew's nodding. He's like, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> and well, guess what happened? What happened? In the middle of the night, a few days prior, we got his paycheck early. Woo! Wow. This doesn't usually happen, but God knew. Just recently, we did our taxes, and we were, you know, we, we, did, we are getting a return, or we got a return. And, you know, we we're like, okay, well, we really need this money. We have some, some big bills coming up, and we really got, and at one point, Andrew's like, you know, it, 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 last year came at this point. <laughs> yes. But we both ultimately prayed together, had peace about it, and guess what? The next morning, the money Woo! came in. That's God's provision at work. And this is just on a financial note. You'd be amazed what God can do in healing, in your work atmosphere. You, God has no end. Amen. Limitless. All right. So, Heavenly Father, I thank you for everyone who's given today and everyone who wants to give. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you bless them, that we do not live by the law any, any longer where you have, to, you have to give to receive, but God, you'll give it to them anyway. We give because we love you. It's a, it's a passion to give for you. Yes. We are passionate about you and you are passionate about us. What a beautiful relationship. 
Heavenly Father, I thank you that you will provide financially in healing, in family, in work, wherever it may be where the provision needs to be met. God, I thank you. You will make it happen in whatever way that that you see fit because, God, your plans are better than ours. Amen. (laughs) So, Heavenly Father, uh, uh, bless this money as the Oasis receives it in order to bless others, Uh, whether it be the light bill to keep this uh, facility running, Heavenly Father, or whether it be someone in need who needs some financial help. I thank you that the Oasis continues to be the lighthouse of the city and the Oasis of the city. In Jesus' name, amen. nodding. What does that mean? (laughs) All right. Y'all know this by now, right? So I'll just tell you when to start. Y'all know the rest. All right. Ready? As we bring our tithes and offerings to the Lord, we believe that we receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, growth and business, settlements of states and inheritance, interest, income and So what I did there, I got the mic on all y'all, see? You all know the profession of faith. Amen. Amen. Pastor Karen, I want to turn it over to you. Amen. Well, I had something planned that I was going to do, and I still want to do it. I'd like us to close with this B. Come on up, sweetie. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just felt, it was interesting, God gave me the beginning and the end in different parts, and I just was saying, Lord, what do you want to do tomorrow? And he just says, I want to do something a little different. So I was prepared, and we're doing something a little different. Yeah. But in light of all that's happened, and thank you, Dr. John, wasn't that awesome? That is communion now. That's what it is. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just want us to go out those doors to dedicate our hearts again and just give God our hearts. Say, here's my heart, Lord. And so just as B singing this and you on live stream, just receive from this today, man. Hallelujah.
is our life. We're found in you. We're loved in you. We're pure in you, Lord. We can breathe in you. Thank you, Lord. Live stream, everyone here, just breathe this week. Just rest in his love. Rest in that freedom that DJ talked about, that we're not under the law, that we're accepted in the beloved right now. That song, thank you, B, that you just sung, we're strong, we're sure in God. We thank you for that. Every person in the sound of my voice, we thank you for that. We thank you for the testimonies. And we declare, Lord, we stand in agreement that, with those that are going through hard times right now. And we thank you that they can breathe. We thank you for life on the other side in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Well, B, why don't you close us out, sweetie? Okay. Hallelujah. <laughs> if you want. Well, before we close, I have our little voice crying in the wilderness. Be sure and come next week because we have a very special young man who's taken the offering before, but this will be his first time to officially be ministering live to us. So why don't you come on up so they can see your face? This is Elder Andrew, and he's going to be ministering live to y'all next week. Hallelujah. Because he loves y'all, and he has the heart of God, and he's called of God to minister life. So praise God. Do not freak out. I'll just tell you what, what Gareth says. Chill out. It'll be all good. So praise God. Amen. <laughs> all right. B, go ahead, sweetie. <laughs> he just whispered me, thanks, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Told on. <laughs> Aww. That thing is safe here. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Oh. Father God, um, thank you so much for minister ministering to us and just letting your way flow through us today, Father God. Um, we pray that this continues on for the rest of the week, that we can breathe, and that we remember that you are good. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah.